call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this 10th day of September 2024 at 5 p.m. I'm going to ask Justin Count, our county attorney, to lead us in a prayer and a place to fly. We can bow our heads. Uh, Lord, first we thank you for all the blessings that you've uh, given us. Uh, whether we realize all of them or not, we know that you have certainly blessed us. We, we also ask that you grant us wisdom and understanding as we... As we discuss the various issues regarding our county today, may our words and actions be filled with grace and understanding. And Lord, we open our hearts to you. And, and finally, Lord, we ask that, that you be with those that are in sickness and in need, and especially those that are dealing with, with sickness in the youngest of, of our lives. Um, it is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you have the minutes of the August 27th meeting, we need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Motion by Brian Daniels. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The minutes are approved. Before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, I need a motion to approve. I like the motion to accept, approve. Motion Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Brian Daniels. Is there any discussion? Any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, or transfers? Being none, all favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. <coughs> Our bills are paid. Before you have Ann's uh, uh, August. Treasurer's financial report, we need to verify that we got it. Make a motion with knowledge. Motion, second, Larry. motion by Larry and second by Jason. Got it. Uh, any discussion? Being none, on in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Next, we're going to recognize the guests. Jennifer Titchener for our father's house. Come forward and talk to us. He said give you guys one of these. It's a little easier to follow along. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we're here. We're here tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna start by giving you guys an update. Um, so this coming Thursday is our two-year anniversary. So we will have been here open and accepting clients for two years on the 12th. So this is kind of what this is. It's kind of a two-year update in the beginning of it here. Um, get started here. I can't see it. My font's too small. So as you guys know, we opened up Father's House on September 12th in 2022. So over the past two years, the programs, we've accepted multiple clients from all over Kentucky, a total of 53 court-ordered individuals in total. We take both. We do, we do court-ordered and walk-ins both. But uh, So we've taken 53 court-ordered. Uh, specifically, 37 of those 53 were ordered from the Ohio County Circuit and District Judges. So they're county, local guys. Um, according to our county jailer, Landon Spurlock, we, I spoke to him about some of these numbers as I was trying to put this together, and he said that it costs the county roughly $39 a day plus medical for each county inmate to be lodged in the jail. Um, so 10 of these 37 uh, that, were, that were court ordered to Father's House, uh, 10 of those have actually completed our 14 month program, and actually they're doing really well. Um, so. In recovery, when you say that, it's almost like a little like, oh, you just almost don't want to, you know, mess it up. <laughs> but the truth is, if they want to they continue this life, they've got every opportunity to do so. And so far, 
the 10 graduates that we've had have stayed on that path. So right. praise the Lord for that, because that's what it's all about right there. And uh, But 10 of those 37 have already completed the 14-month program. Uh, those 10 individuals were facing 5 to 10 years of jail time, but they came to Father's house as an alternative. And uh, luckily, most of the time, the judge works with us really well with this, and they won't uh, actually tell them uh, whether they are or are not going to end up doing jail time until they finish the program, which really helps give them more incentive to stick it out, right? Because it gets tough. It gets hard. And uh, so the, in the 14 months that they were in our program, though, those 10 individuals saved the county approximately $163,800. So that's over the last two years. That's just our graduates. Um, the, that, and that's just the 14 months, too. Uh, several of those gentlemen would have been in jail a lot longer than 14 months had they not came to recovery and actually completed it and was successful at it. Um, so over the past two years, we've taken in um, Ohio County court-ordered clients that, for various reasons, didn't complete the program. Unfortunately, they don't all stick it out and do what they need to. Uh, but they do stay for various amounts of times. Uh, 16 clients for a total of 2,080 days, which equals $81,120 of savings to the court, to the county. Uh, we currently have 11 local clients in our program that were ordered by the Ohio County Court System. These 11 have been with us various amounts of time. They're still you know, in the progress of the program. Uh, as of 9-7, that totaled 2,971 days, a total of $115,869, occurring at a rate of $429 a day with our current local number. So that's for a grand total estimate over the last two years of $360,789 of savings to the Ohio County budget of in court cost for these gentlemen to be at father's house instead of Ohio County Jail or, or whatever jail that the county puts them into. I know they don't always stay there. But, um, our, our clients and graduates are contributing to the <coughs> county's workforce by holding local jobs. Uh, this is just kind of our current list, what you got there in front of you, uh, where they are now. We, we assist them in getting employment. You know, honestly, they work just a little bit of everywhere uh, around here in the county locally. Uh, Purdue, they work pretty good with us. You know, right now we have five that are there. Agro and Hartford has one. That's one of our graduates, actually. He's still there. Uh, Beaverdam Building Supply, WPT, Skipworth Farms. The Illuminary Behavioral Health, uh, I some of you guys are familiar with that program. They have their offices here in the community center. Well, they work directly with Father's House. Uh, we have a counselor through them that actually comes to Father's House, and she has an office there. She meets with our clients there. And uh, there's a CSA program that they do also. And four of our uh, two that are in our program and two graduates actually got certified to be a CSA and they work for Illuminaire at Father's House. Um, they just do various things, uh, everything from transporting the guys to doctor's appointments to court, uh, court, just wherever, whatever they need, uh, all the way up to our house manager who manages the daily operations of the house, you know, so. That's a pretty big deal to us. It's a huge blessing to, to have a Luminaire partnered with us doing these things for us and with us. Um, Tamerlane, Dunaway, Canteen Services at Purdue, ICAST. We also have a few that were working in Owensboro at Castlin Steel and Owensboro Riverport. Um, there's been a few in the past at Jim Mar, Centertown, Young's, uh, Maintenance, Sharps Lawn Care. Like I said, they've been a little bit everywhere. Uh, just different, different people. They, they all have to have full-time work. Uh, once they're there for 30 days, they all have to have a full-time job. So that's a, big, that's a big important thing for us to have relationships with our local folks to put them to work. And so far, this has worked out really well. It really has. These guys, we rarely do we ever have a hard time finding them employment, which is an awesome thing. Um, and we do appreciate that in our, because we're a small county, you know. I know it's not, uh, I say small, but what I mean by that is these other programs that are similar to Father's House are in bigger communities, right? <clears throat> there's, there's several in Owensboro, you know, so obviously they have a lot more to pick from, you know, even in businesses and partnerships with different things. And um, so, yeah, when I say small, that's what I mean, you know, obviously we don't have as much as they do. So we kind of have to centralize that a little bit more, you know, we have, we have fewer, so we try to utilize those more. Let's put it that way. We have fewer resources, so we try to get all we can get out of these resources. 
to keep this thing going and, and having the successful rate that we're having. Uh, the reality of working in recovery is that 100% start the journey, but not all make it. The first, second, even third time. We, we rest assured, even if they don't graduate this program, that they don't leave the same as they came. We have worked diligently over the last two years doing renovations to our facility. As you all know, I've been here many times talking about this particular thing. Most of the labor has been done by ourselves, volunteers, and the guys in the program. We're down to the final phase of renovation, and we're reaching out to the physical court tonight for some financial assistance to complete this program. We're asking for help to finish the last section of remodel in our building, the kitchen, chow hall is what we're calling it. This is a pretty big project that once uh, it's finished, honestly is a, is a game changer to our program. Uh, finishing this space will allow us to use the space that's currently being used for their kitchen for laundry areas and to free up more space for not only future expansion, but to give better living quarters to the 30 beds we already have. Uh, it will give us the ability to have public access to our huge sanctuary, which we have already completed the renovations on, um, for use for things like youth events, recovery meetings for the public, for families of our, the addicts that are in our program, and other events, you know. It's a really nice, nice venue. It really is. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. Most recovery centers don't have access to something like that in their facility. They have to go outside and, and do that. So we're pretty excited about that. This, this, this uh, project I'm talking about, though, it divides, it divides the, the, the entry of the building to this sanctuary that I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, it'll give, uh, it'll give our clients a bigger, more useful space for their kitchen. They all share a pretty small kitchen right now because it's temporary. It's always been temporary, so we're just, we make do with what we've got. Um, this is a really important thing, this next paragraph I want to share with you all tonight because some of this is actually new. Um, but I don't know, some of you may know this, some may not, so I just want to share it with you tonight. But we don't, we receive no state or federal funding for Father's House. Uh, we don't bill insurance for, for, the, for our recovery program, we don't. Now the companies like Illuminator that come in with the therapist, the therapist bills their insurance for the therapy. But as far as the program itself, we don't bill any kind of insurance. That's, the, the guys go to work full time and then they pay a weekly fee for their program out of their own pocket. So we, we also don't qualify for most of the grants that come from those avenues too. And I'm going to explain why. So I don't know if any of you are familiar, but they just passed a new, a new sober living housing law. Um, Justin, you may be more, more, I guess, familiar with this, but it's House Bill 248. And they actually signed it into law at the end of July and put it into effect. Well, this new house law, we actually at Father's House are exempt from that, okay? The reason that we're exempt from it is because we are a religious affiliated organization. We're faith-based. Um, we are a 501c3 organization, and we don't build insurance for any of the stuff. So that exempts us from having to be certified through the state <coughs> as this, this new law has put out. So this new law, though, the House Bill 248, it actually um, is a law that the state of Kentucky signed in that even sober living homes now, they have to be certified through the state. Okay, so just in short, obviously any new bill is, you know, 16 pages long. We don't have time tonight to go through all those details. But in short, um, because we're exempt from the state certification put in place by House Bill 248, Father's House is exempt under Section 2BB of this new bill. Certification would require us to offer medical assisted treatment. Okay, that's MAT for short, if many of you are familiar with that. That is the Suboxone, Methadone, the, the other medications that they give folks that are coming off of opioids or different things to help, it's, it's, it's a maintenance drug, I guess. So if you're a state certified facility, then you're, you're required to offer that in your facility. And allow clients also in this new law it's wrote up that you have to allow your clients to use any doctor prescribed medications, including painkillers. And as all of you all, unfortunately, in my opinion, well know, uh, beginning January 2025, medical cannabis. We hold the stance at Father's House at being 100% drug free. 
We're very passionate about that. And it's just not something we're willing to, I guess, change. You know, we don't want to compromise that so that we can get federal and state grant money. So we feel like there has to be an alternative. Now, I understand there is a place for MAT, for medical assisted treatment there is, but there, there needs to be an alternative also because we do work in recovery and we have been for two years now. So we've gotten to know a lot of these ins and outs of these things. And a lot of these gentlemen don't want to go to a place where they're even, where that's even an option because they're addicts. And if you're an addict and you have an option to use drugs to make you feel better, usually you're going to do it. So 100% abstinence from any mind-altering substance is what we do at Father's <coughs> House. They're not allowed to have narcotics. We've had guys in our house manager, he had hernia surgery. He's a recovery, he, he's a recovered alcoholic and he took extra strength Tylenol to heal from that because he didn't want no part of that stuff, right? It's 100% abstinence. So that's what we want to do and we're very passionate about it. And we could go through the certification process. To be honest with you, we already do all of those things that, that they're requiring. It's not that there's something we don't want to do other than the medical assistant treatment and the prescription drugs. So that, the other part of that wouldn't be a hard thing for us to do, and we could do that if we chose to do that. We chose to go that route. But we actually, we actually have a choice. Uh, some facilities don't. They, just, they, they have to do this if they're going to stay open. We do have a choice because we are we, we're exempt. So we're going to choose not to. We're going to choose to remain 100% drug free. And that does mean that that limits our access to a lot of these grants and things that you see a lot of the other places getting and qualifying for. <coughs> so that being said, we hold this stance of 100% drug free facility. We don't allow our clients to consume any mind altering substance outside of mental health meds that are prescribed by their providers. We're very passionate about keeping Father's House Recovery Program a drug free alternative to those seeking one. There is a place for that, as I just said, and I really believe that, done properly in the right way, there is a place for that. That's the reason the state is pushing it so hard. They really believe in this medical assisted treatment. And there's gonna be many, many, many facilities, there already are, and there's gonna be many more that are offering that, right? So that's, there's gonna be plenty of that out there if that's what someone wants. We wanna be an alternative to that. And that's, what, that's kind of where we stand on that. Um, so, Exempt facilities like Father's House were told by Mr. Brian Hubbard, who's chairman of the Kentucky Opioid Abatement Advisory Commission, they told facilities like us to turn to our local governments. You guys. So that's what we're doing tonight. Um, so as you know, I'm telling you guys, man, I can look at this on this paper, but we see it every day. We see it every day at Father's House and, and you see, you know, you see these guys find freedom from addictions. You see them being reunited with their family. You see all these things, the great things that happen in that place. I'm telling you, these little kids, you know, they come up there to see their dad, and it's a dad that they didn't have before, and this, it's, words can't describe that. Words can't describe what we see on a daily basis around that place. And, you know, this is what we're coming to you for, the last page there, and this is the, the kitchen renovation that I was talking about. You know, the, the grand total for this is $39,600. It's just a small, small fraction of how much that this facility has saved the county over the last two years. And we're going to continue to do. Again, this is occurring on a daily basis, every day. Um, I just kind of gave a round amount there, you know. In three months, we'll save the county that much money. We'll be asking for it tonight. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of, there's really no, no, other, no more explanation on my part unless you guys have some questions. But... Uh, that's kind of where we are. We really want to see this finished. We've had this thing for two years. We've been working on this building, and we've had we've had a, it's always been a three phase process ever since the day we walked in and opened the door. It's, it, was, it was horrible shape. We knew that. So we finished phase one. You guys helped with that. That's what when we opened two years ago in the the one building there, and we got her open. We got it up off the ground. Got things rolling. We finished phase two. Uh, like I said, on our own with the, the folks in the facility, uh, my husband and myself, our church family, people volunteering to come in and work. Um, so we finished phase two. Well, we, we were about halfway through phase three. The, the final leg of phase three is this kitchen, is this kitchen and this chow hall. And, and we are excited about that. And you know, we'll, just as we have all, all along, we'll push through that and we'll get that done. This isn't a make us or break us kind of thing here tonight. We're gonna do this regardless. But uh, you know what? I'm going to do what Mr. Hubbard told me to do, which is come to my county government 
and say, guys, we're saving you guys lots of dollars. And, you know, so we're just asking you tonight to return that favor in a small way and help us finish this thing out and get this thing rolling so that we can move forward. Uh, well, we sure appreciate you and everything that the Father's House has done. And uh, we're not going to be able to give you a no or a yes tonight, but well, we don't. But we're going to take it under advisement. And see, we don't have that free balance now, mm -hmm. but we're going to see. We'll take it under advisement uh, when our treasurer gets back. She's on vacation. I'm going to have. I'm going to appoint a couple. Well, at least one of these magistrates and some other staff to look into it. Uh, three of the magistrates came out and took a tour of Father's uh, House a few months ago. Well, we're, and, I've been there. I, yeah, I'm, it's, it's that impressive. was really nice to be able to like, you know, show yeah. them this is it, what we're doing. It's very, very impressive. Yeah. Let me. Uh, I came and yeah. I want. There's a few things I want to know, okay. and I kept saying I want to talk with you and uh, our arts program. And sure. try to, I haven't done that. Would you guys be able, Jimmy? Is that something if I? Before next meeting, can we sit down and talk, compare things, and then maybe Ann's sure. going to be back. She's on vacation, and we can maybe look into this the next meeting. Sure. But there are a few questions I had for, that I asked for you mm -hmm. that Jimmy wasn't there, and I'm, right. maybe we can get those. Sure, absolutely. And we'll try to get that done before the next meeting. You know, uh, I'd like to be a part of that. Do you want to be sure. Michael and I can, yeah. like, do you, you want to do a 4 o'clock between each, before the next meeting, or 3.30? Uh, is that going to be at four o'clock in the Okay, could still do it, but it, that'd be a different. You just let me know. You just let me know. And whatever works out for you, right. I think. I think we can be flexible. Anytime yeah. next week, do you have Michael's number? Uh huh. Um, just make it like it, it's three thirty <laughs> back time, Jimmy, for you, and maybe we could meet here. We'll talk to you after this meeting, and okay. maybe kind of, and then. We'll talk to Dan, but I, I did have a couple questions. So, sure. like you said, you had 50, 50, 53 court order. Yeah. Now, is that ordered through a judge, or is that you're talking about? Is that including what, what Jimmy would bring, Arch Program? No, actually, that? those the guys were the judge pretty much just orders them directly to Father's house. I mean, Justin's probably more, he's really familiar with how this process works. Um, Actually, this is the way this usually goes down. Now, I don't know the specifics on those 53. I know uh, 90, let's just say 98% of these court orders, folks, yeah. uh, a public defender, their public defender will reach out to Father's House. Okay. And they'll say, we have a, I have a client that's love seeking recovery. They'll find out all the ins and outs about the program. Uh, our directors will call this client, this person, and do an interview and see if they're actually a fit for the program, That make sure they understand what they're getting into before they agree to this 14 months of, of recovery. And then when all of that is okay, our directors will send in an acceptance letter to this public defender. The public defender takes the acceptance letter to court with them, and that goes directly to the judge. The judge decides yay or nay, and if he says yes, he court orders them, and sends us the court order, and they bring the guy to us and drop him off. Well, after this meeting, we'll try to get together. We'll try to get by week of meeting. Together and sure. But I, do, yeah. I, I did the visit, and it would seem like a nice program. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. not that we're not impressed yeah. with it. We just do right. have a limited amount of cash flow, well, but we are going to look at it. What's the percentage of the participants from other counties? What's the percentage? It's very, it's, it's a lot smaller than that. Um, like I said, there's the 53, I didn't write that on there, but I can get that for you if you want it, but it's nowhere near it's what the county, they're 80% they're local, I mean at least, maybe more. And y'all haven't uh, got no grants? We no. haven't got no, we don't no. qualify for that. The, we have, we've got, here's what we've gotten. We, uh, we apply for like, uh, like there's a, a grant that Jaeger Materials gives. It's not like government grants, you understand what I'm saying? It's not state or federal. It's other, you know, like personal grants. We apply for things like that, and we have gotten one of, from them, but these are like, I think it was, what, $10,000, Tamara? Yeah. I mean, these aren't huge grants, but this is how we have done some of these other things. But they're they're private grants, you know, from places like that. We do apply for that. We can get those. Well, quickly, we my just, understanding what she said before, because we, we'll talk about this meeting, but that they, in it, because they don't accept they right. can't get state and federal. Now, the yeah. real quick, does that mean no state or federal? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the bill, the new bill they just passed, it's actually listed in the bill that, that if you're not a state certified facility, they're not, they, don't even, they really don't even want the courts to send someone to you above the state certified guys. 
they just can't really tell a judge what to do, you know, so they don't have a lot. But they they would they they strongly consider they want them to strongly consider the state facilities over places like Father's House. Is it because y'all are affiliated with churches? Is that the reason? Well, that and the fact that we're a nonprofit and that we're not billing the insurance company, so there's not a lot of big money rolling around, you know, that's it's a lot of those things. Can I buy. say can I say something real quick? Thousand that we give the county here before, didn't we consider that a grant? Well, we, we, we did contribute. Yeah, that's what something. I was talking about, about phase one. Yes, you guys did. You helped us get that going. This is what they're talking about is dual diagnosis clinics and stuff, recoveries and stuff. We sent four guys to a, a place in Hopkinsville. It was $8,200 for 28 days apiece is what these places so the insurance charge. Pays. The insurance pays at these, at these drug dual diagnosis is what that deals insurance and, and listen just be honest with you I don't see anything right about that that's 28 days eight thousand two hundred dollars a piece and they come back to our program after that and relapsed yeah. okay so Tuesday at 3 30 does that work for everybody next Tuesday at 3 30 here we can meet here at this building sounds good Appreciate it. will be in the old one. Yeah. Jimmy, our sprinkle, is that okay? Where at? In the old building right across the hall here. Okay. Yeah. Sure will. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the tours. Very nice. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Okay. Let's uh, move on to uh, our extension office. Uh, since it wasn't an increase, we don't have to approve it, but we did acknowledge it. We just want you to see it, and she's going to put it in the minutes that we got the extension office tax rates, which they took compensating. And uh, I'm on that board. Just make a motion to acknowledge. Please. I'll make that motion. Motion by Jason. Second. Second by Brian. Any discussion? Beating that on paper, say aye. Aye, aye, aye. Hold we've, uh, we've done it. Next, uh, Jace. Uh, you have that bid. Uh, okay, as you see, the next two things deals with the golf carts at the golf course. And uh, we only got one, so I'm assuming that can, it's for both of them, that they're both, uh, both of them in there. The bid to sit, sell and the bid to purchase? Yeah. Assume, or lease? We're assuming that they're in both, both of them in there. So what this is is we have we bought those lease golf carts. You probably weren't around. They're 10 years old now. They're all we're putting a lot of money into them. So we thought while we still had them working, we might sell those and trade in to get a newer lease program. And um, this is Cunningham's golf vehicle, golf utility vehicles. So there's 18 golf carts that we have there, and they're 10 years old, anywhere from uh, uh, 16 and 15s, and they want to give us $42,600 for their purchasing from an average of $2,000 to $41.50 a piece. So that's what they're, and I think they went through each one of them. And How many of them is it? There's 18 golf carts. For forty-two thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, and what's the other one? The bound. Let me try to figure this out. Oh. Okay, so if they trade the forty-two thousand dollars in, this is a lease option right here. Uh, there would be an annual payment of $11,456.89 for five years, and these have a four-year limited warranty on them. Uh, so the lease option would go for five years. And what Steve Seegers wanted to tell me... Is that the option to own? Yeah. Well, there would, be a, there would be a little bit amount to purchase at the end of it. I think this is, I forgot how much, this is the lease for five years. How much more? 
But I'm looking. I'm trying to see here. These others we actually bought like a year into or two years into the lease program. Yeah, we paid them off. I thought this was a lease to lease to purchase. It is a lease to purchase, but I think there is a payment at the end. I'm not trying to see what it is. $1,500 or $2,000 a cart after that due in July 2030 because these carts are like $8,000 a piece or something like that. So it would be $2,000 per cart at the end of the option, whatever we want to decide to buy. It would be 36 more thousand? Yeah, if you buy the 18, that would be 36 more thousand. That's what it says. still here. runnable, doable? Well, like the other day, I know Steve said he, he called the other day, and one of them he put $750 in. And then there was another one he had to, I get the batteries are getting no two, and I think there's like, I'm not a, I don't golf. How many golf, how many batteries are in a golf cart? Uh, it depends on if they're 36 or 48. Well, no, these are, these are gas. Oh, gas? They're gas. Well, batteries are not a big issue. But are the ones we have are gas out there now, are they? Yeah. Are they? Okay. That was something, I know that one day he had $750 he had to, something to do with. And I, I wish he was here. I don't know exactly what else he said. Something or kind of come apart on him. I know they're ten years old, uh, but he did tell me last year at the golf course we went over ten thousand dollars over budget, or a little bit more than that. I don't have the exact figure because Ann's at, at here. But at this point, from from. Um, June first until today, we are eight thousand ten dollars and seventy one cents above budget than we were last year at this point. So we went above budget last year. We're already eight thousand ten dollars and seventy one cents above budget this year. So, and you also got to count that you're not using all your maintenance money on repairing the old golf carts. So and that's the budget we just passed. No, this is the revenue that came in. This is the revenue that came in compared to this point last year. Now it's not. It, it's hard to tell because we don't have a full year budget yet. But now last year we went above budget. It was well. It's over ten thousand dollars above yeah. our budget. Yeah, we received more than our budget. And this year we're already eight thousand dollars over budget from last year. So. Um, and nobody else bid. And I'm wondering. Well, this is. I think this is the same company we did last time. It right? is. It's same. It's the same outfit. Yeah. But no one, I was curious why no one else bid on it was advertised. And our first payment necessarily doesn't have to be made until next next July, I think. So we'll be in the new budget. Yeah. So they can be we'll be in the new budget. Year. Can we table this the next meeting? I'd like to ask Ann some questions. You want to? Is that a motion? Do I make a motion to Yeah. I'll make a motion to take this to the next meeting. Uh, I'll second that. You guys want a copy of this, I guess, a little more? Yeah, who, who, whatever research you want to do. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, like, did it work out the last time we did it? No, it, I mean, it's, we can't afford, if you're going to keep the golf course, you can't afford to go out and buy 18 golf courses. I mean, this is the only way the court could do it, is do it on the lease program and have well, a the person have to compare where it's, it, well, you've got to add on to that. Uh, yeah, but if you were to go out and buy 18 golf carts right now, 8,000 times. About $108,000. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we could not, you right? couldn't afford to do that. Money, That's why we did it last time. We might start checking our priorities. Well, true, but I'm just saying their budget can afford it now because they're actually going over a budget the last two years. Yeah, the golf course budget will pay for it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say by being $8,000 over budget at this point right now anyway. Okay. It's one of the one things that we don't actually... It's about $1,000 a month. You know what? It's about $1,000 a month. Okay, well, let's go ahead and vote on that. I'm in favor of tabling that. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, okay. It's table, but let's, everybody please do your research. We don't want to stall on this forever. So let's be sure we can get it done by the next meeting.
So any questions you got, try to get them answered between now. And if you want to, call, because uh, like I said, I'm not, call Mr. Seegers out at the golf course. Yeah, he, can, so he can let you know. Uh, next, we're going into committee reports, and I'm going to recognize uh, Jason first. He's uh, on the committee for the the uh, ordinance for the grass on the highway. Okay. There's been some, have some people here interested in that. There's been some concerns about grass being blown over the highway. Rightfully so. There is a hazard, a danger. We don't really want to have a separate ordinance of just where grass is blowing over the um, over the roads, and it's intentionally. We're not sitting here because I know we have trackers that help us mow park on the side of the roads, and we're thankful for them. It's those that are blowing a thick blanket of grass and just leaving it there. You know, you can go back and blow it out. So we had an ordinance we passed a couple of years ago. It's basically a trash ordinance that if you're trash too much. What we did is just added a line in this ordinance, so we just have a new ordinance. And basically what it says in Section 8 of this ordinance, it says no homeowner, tenant, or individual, or entity mowing or maintaining a yard on behalf of a homeowner shall blow, sweep, or otherwise deposit clipping, leaves, or other debris on public roadways. Any person violating or assisting in the violation of this section shall be cited upon conviction and be fined no less than $20 and no more than $100 each offense. For the day's continuance of condition shall constitute a separate offense. Now our job, this means basically we're going to go out there and if they have it on to say, listen, would you please blow this off? It's not to find them the first time. It's not, we're actually going to tell them a couple, but if they continue to do this and you've asked and it becomes a safety hazard with motorcycles on the street, then well, there will be a, up to $20, no more than 100 But we felt like putting this in our nuisance ordinance would just give us a little bit of teeth. Not that we're out there wanting to maintain or try to find everybody, but this gives Charlie something to do if it becomes a continuance and they just continue doing it and doing it in spite, I guess you might say. So it gives them a little bit of a teeth to have something to do. Not most to, of enforcement would be by complaint. Somebody would let us Yes, know. we would be a by complaint. We're not out. Like this ordinance we got about the trash ordinance here and around houses. How long we've had this in? Two years. Maybe over two years and I know that we've only used it one time and the B well, it's there. for siding, but but yeah. now many have picked it up when we went and told them it's yeah. a law you've got to clean this. And that's what it is. It just gives us as people's got bags and bags of trash. We can go say, hey, we have this, and they usually take care of it. And that's all that is going to be about the grass. Now, if they become an issue where they just do it just out of spite all the time, and it's a safety to a motorcycler, then we 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 might start cycling at that point. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and have the first reading of ordinance 2024 dash. There's not a number on here. Who's going to enforce this? Charlie. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, he able to write a citation? Yes. Is uh, a motion by Jason. You want to second Brown? Uh, yes, I'll second. Any further discussion? I just have a problem telling people they can't mow. Uh, it's not telling people you can't mow. We want them to mow. It's telling the people that if there's a safety concern. And here's the thing. I have a question. Doctor. Yes. Okay. A. Who do we contact if this is if this is an issue? Because uh, I live between here and Pleasant Ridge, and it's constantly an issue mm -hmm. you, down you, 231. You so call 911. Are, are we calling dispatch or are we calling you, Sh Charlie Shields? You call Charlie Shields if you get him in the office. You're not called 911. <laughs> they'll get him. Okay. But the next part of my question, again, brings me back to it, county and city is just as bad. They don't clean behind themselves. Are we going to cite them? Like, are we going to warn Well, this is a county ordinance right here. Right, but like when the county and the state... Well, I'll be honest with you. Here's the thing. Now, we're going to try to do better, but if, if a mower is out helping us mow our ditches and along the roadways, we're not going to be out there and be trying to get on to them. It's, now, we're going to try to do better. We talked about that as far as equipment we can get to knock... But we need to mow our, we need to mow our rideways. No, and I'm, not you know saying, I mean? I'm not saying not to mow. I'm just saying if they... If it's... Big clumps left in the road, 
the, yeah. the county and the state have blowers. We're going to do a better job. You're going to do a better and job. And that's my question. Like how? I mean, we're going like to it is an issue for us because we're we're all bike riders. It is yeah. it is a big issue for us. So that's that's where my concern. Well, but this is this is actually going to give us because here's the thing. We don't want to. But if you don't have anything in an ordinance, there's right. really nothing you can do or say. Right. But so ain't it already in Kentucky state law? Do no, what? No, we researched it. We really thought it was. But yeah. Not. I just pulled it up. It might be. I don't really know, but this is allowing the this is allowing us in the county to take care of it. So I guess real call Miranda. And, I'm just. And here's the thing. I mow and mine gets on. I get some on the road, but you know what I do? I take my mower and I blow it off as but, I. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But when do you do that? Right after I mow. After you're done mowing. Yeah. If, by the time you blow it on, so I can come through there and my bike can slide underneath me. So, so as soon as you put it on the road, yeah. it should come right back off. Well, I, everybody I tries to not, I'm a, I mean, the well, here's the right work to do that. You're probably right, but if you're going this way, depending on how you mow, you're going to get a little bit on. We're, we're looking for those that, this has given us stuff that just leaves it and don't do anything to it. Right, and that's, and that's yeah. more so the concern. Yes. Like, and I get people have to mow, and I get people live by. It's the gonna, that's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But we're talking like the massive clumps and lots of grass, like especially there, like where two thirty one feet used to be. Those, those are really bad. Like you go through, and it's halfway across two thirty one. Okay. I mean, like I own a mowing company. As soon as I, mow, I don't blow nothing towards the road. I make six passes. Yeah. And everything goes in. And I have a sixty inch mower. I get nothing on the road because I do ride. Yeah. But people will vote right next to the road and blow it out. If that's fine, come back across the road. Yeah. And blow Again, it back that's, off the road. That's, that's what we're, yeah. We're, that's what, as soon that's as you mow, we get done, at. take care of it. We don't, it's, it's if you leave it there straight across, you know, that's what we don't really want. But if you have a big yard, if you leave it there until you're done, that's an hour. I understand that. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, it's a, if, it's a, if someone goes by and sees well, I mean, it the road. Like I said the last time I was in here, David Johnson, whenever he was campaigning the last time, he came out. He saw me mowing my bank. You all have been to my house. You all have seen my bank. Right. I have to make probably 16 to 20 passes at an angle down that bank. And yes, it's going to blow out in the road. Yes. When I get finished with that bank, immediately I go up the road on my mower, turn around, and come back and blow all my grass off. It may take me 20, 30 minutes to get that bank done. So we do have to have a little bit of leeway there. But I'm also not in the middle of the Yeah, we're going to have, I'm, I, I, we're going to have a little bit of leeway. It's not like, right, right. this is just people that are deliberately going to, after right. they've been warned, and here's the thing, you just think that you just ought to blow it off anyway. I mean, you shouldn't have to be told. Really, I think to blow the grass off the road. But that's common sense, Jason, and most people, yeah. Yeah. that's kind of a problem and these days. On a major road, <laughs> though, two cars go by, it blows it off. Yes. But yeah. if they're between those two cards, there's a bunch of people doing it. Yeah, we uh, right, right. Yeah. we really appreciate it. We're going but this to is ahead. this is a step to give us yeah. some leverage if we yeah. have to, if yeah. it becomes a problem with somebody. Okay. Yeah, we're going to really right. go ahead and vote on it. We've got to uh, be done here in a few minutes, but we do re appreciate yeah, everybody's time. We're going to at the road department when we're shorthanded now. Well, yeah. we're going to have somebody coming by and blowing. Mm -hmm. We've got a blower that goes on the truck. Yeah, but we're, we don't have yeah. enough men, Judge. We'll just have to make it work, and they may can eliminate some of it as they go. Well, Olaf? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? No. Morphew? No. McKinney? Yes. And listen, this is not to be out to try to get somebody in trouble. It's actually to keep our citizens safe, and that's what we're trying to do here. Right, and that's and as riders, yeah. that's it's not to try to be the police. Not or, you know, to go around and what we would like this from here. We're not out police, but if there becomes an issue, we want to make sure somebody's safe. The first reading will visit again to the next meeting, or actually, be the first meeting in the, uh, September will be. I mean, in October we'll have the hunting rate, another rate. With, with ordinance form, do we need to go out of the court as opposed to the we, members here? We will on the second reading. Okay. You want this, if this was second reading, it wouldn't be done.
So when will this ordinance actually go? We have to do two more weeks. It's got to go two more weeks before we can have a second reading on it. It has so to be published, week. Larry. Did, it has to be published for the in the paper. And all the court members will need to be here, I believe. Yeah. At least you have to have them. You have to have that step forward. It's not just the uh, on the second reading. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Is uh, there, is there any other committee reports? Uh, not. Let's go to the magistrate's comments. Let's start with uh, Larry. Comments, um, request. I think I brought it to your attention today about the tank out at the uh, yes. park. I'm going to work on that. Needs to be refurbished. Uh, if the uh, National Guard won't do it, because anyway, the county can do yes. it. Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, we have went as far as get the paint before. We'll do it. We'll make sure that it's available. <laughs> Brian. No. Also, uh, is there, I don't guess, heard any more on the road money when we're going to get it, get to do our block topping? Uh, no. No. have no. Of course, I mean, of course, you know, we did, we just let the POs for the uh, flex and for the ones that had money left from last year, we've got that all a PO that now. So that's step going that direction. Okay. And be careful not run out of time. Well, I seriously don't think we're going to get it done this any extra this year. Uh, Jake? No, I just want to say I, I've been texting. Sorry if you've been watching me. Uh, Bo's the daddy. He had the baby. Everything's fine. He didn't give us any name or anything. But uh, we have a match with the daddy this morning. And uh, good news on uh, uh, Landon Spurlock's baby today. Yes. Prayer's been answered there, One. but they um, Jerusalem Ridge this weekend Thursday. Got a lot going on this weekend, so uh, but the Jerusalem Ridge Festival from Thursday to Sunday. If you know anything going on? Go out there. And uh, sorry, it wasn't at the last meeting, but my I got an opportunity to go see Dolly Parton with my wife, and so uh, not often you can go see Dolly Parton. So. Uh, we can take you too. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, Ronnie, uh, let's leave you, Michael. I'd, I'd like to invite everybody out to the Green Mile County Fair this weekend as well. That's, right, it's fine. That's in the first district of the county. It's at our Ohio County Park. Uh, Band Festival this weekend, and Bo's out here to tell everybody about Center Town Days. So get excited. Question about that, Michael. Okay, Rodney, he goes out every morning and walks out there to the park. And uh, I mean, last year they tried to charge him. I mean, he was just walking the, the trails all he was doing to come back and get his vehicle and leave. They were trying to charge him to get in to the fair. How does that work? I mean, is it? Can yeah, they do that definitely, or I didn't know that, that was an issue. Uh, during fair time, the, 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 we allow the, the campers, the people that have, uh, you know, passes to get in and out, but as far as a, a walker, I, you know, I need to, I guess I need to look into that, Larry. I didn't realize that that was an issue. Uh, I'll be at the gate a couple of nights this year, so if that seems to... Well, he goes out in the morning, usually when he goes out. Yeah, they dealt there. with that in the past, I think, Mark, but don't they, like, they've had soccer games, and I think that they're supposed to let people go through. Yes. But yeah, they're supposed to, they should, yeah. he shouldn't have had that issue. Yeah, that, I that, apologize for yeah. that. We'll tell them about I understand that. They're, they're trying to get ticket sales, but yeah, but I, I think they're supposed to allow them to go through. Yeah, I don't, I don't, we shouldn't be, we just talking about that. that, that wall, but I don't know. He did ask Bo as well. I don't know if there's some kind of agreement there. Uh, we don't, we no longer have a fair, uh, we don't longer have a park board, so we, have, we need to ask Bo again. Okay. Most importantly, we just hope it don't rain for all these minutes this right. weekend. Most rain for all these minutes. Jason, Justin, you No, Judge. Judge. Thank you. Any other official got anything? Being none, we're going to call this meeting adjourned. We'll see you in two weeks at the, uh, the next court meeting. We'll Tuesday at 3.30. And be up at the Rosine, be on the road. Uh, he's adjourned. Thank you.